Good evening. I hope you are all well this Wednesday evening. A number of things happening and of course lots of things not happening um, around the, the churches. But on Sunday we will have our video worship again and the video will be available to view certainly by 10 o'clock on Sunday morning and very probably much earlier than that. Um, I know some of you enjoy being able to, to watch and participate in our Sunday worship late on a Saturday night or at some point of your choosing through the Sunday or maybe later in the week. This coming Sunday, the 14th of February, as well as being Valentine's Day, is the last Sunday before Lent. So we're in the last Sunday of the season of Epiphany. Epiphany began with the story of the, the wise men from the East following a star. It began with a bright, shining light. And the season of Epiphany, the Sunday before Lent, takes us again to a bright, shining light. The light of transfiguration and the story of Jesus on the mountaintop with some of his disciples. Let's hear that story from Mark. Mark's Gospel. We're journeying through that with the lectionary this year. And we're still really at chapter one, maybe two, but we take a wee bit of a step forward for this story of the, the Mount of Transfiguration. So, from Mark's Gospel, chapter nine, reading from verse two. Six days later, Jesus took Peter, James and John and went up on a high mountain. They were all alone. While these followers watched, Jesus was changed. His clothes became shining white, whiter than any person could make them. Then two men appeared, talking with Jesus. The men were Moses and Elijah. Peter said to Jesus, Teacher, it's good that we're here. We will put three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Peter did not know what to say, because he and the others were so frightened. Then a cloud came over and covered them. A voice came from the cloud. The voice said, This is my son, and I love him. Obey him. Then Peter, James and John looked around, but they saw only Jesus there alone with them. As Jesus and his followers were walking back down the mountain, he commanded them, don't tell anyone about the things you saw on the mountain. Wait until the Son of Man rises from death, then you may tell. So the followers obeyed Jesus and said nothing about what they had seen, but they discussed what Jesus meant about rising from death. Amen. May God bless to us these words tonight. It was for the disciples a mountaintop experience. And occasionally we have them, don't we? The moments that we just don't fully understand. The moments when it does seem as if something of heaven has touched us here on earth. But most of life, most of life is lived in the valleys, on the plains, in the mundane, in the ordinary the everyday. And I know that for so many just now with the limitations that Covid brings, each day can be the same. So little that 
can be done. And we remember all those whose work and commitments and responsibilities doesn't take them to that place, but takes them to a particular busyness. But whether our life is busy or whether it is quiet, take time for the special moments, for the holy moments to break through. The moments when, like those disciples on the mountainside, we can say, it's good. It's good to be here. Life is good in the midst of the ups and the downs. The glimpses we have of eternal things. For the moments when we truly know that Jesus is with us. A bright light. And we pray that we might carry something of that light into a world that knows so much darkness. The high moments are special. But Jesus led his friends then as he leads ordinary folk back down the mountain, down to the places where there's work to be done, people to be beside. And the disciples would soon be back down on the level with Jesus. As we read on in that chapter, we come to more healings, more encounters with Jesus. May we know Jesus with us in the mountaintop moments, in the valleys, in the joys and the dreams and the high moments, and in the despair in the loneliness, in the ordinariness of it all. Let's bring to God our prayers this Wednesday evening. Lord our God, for another day we pause and we give you thanks for its ups and its downs, for the things for which we want to say thank you, and we acknowledge before you all the things that cause us to say why. Why me? Why her? Why him? We thank you for the mountaintop moments that bring to us strength and hope. And we thank you for the times in the valleys, the times when we we learn life's truths, times when we realise that we're stronger than we thought, times when we know that we are being guided and led and being given a great sense of purpose. We bring to you our prayers tonight for all those who are feeling so low, for those who have lost loved ones in recent days, for all who grieve and mourn and remember loved ones. We bring to you our prayers for doctors and nurses, staff and volunteers, for all those involved in bringing the vaccine to so many. For teachers, carers, parents, engaged with the education and formation of our young people, we pray. Give to them all strength and patience and understanding. As we pray for others, so too we pray for ourselves. Lord God, you know and you understand our every need. Hear us. Help us. Heal us. And all our prayers, all our praying, we 
bring together, as we say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever. Amen. Be present, O merciful God, guard and protect us through the silent hours of this night, that we who are wearied and fatigued by the changes and chances of this fleeting world may repose upon your eternal changelessness through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Good night. God bless you all. Keep safe. Keep a safe distance. Keep washing your hands. Keep doing all the things that we're being asked to do to help others, to help ourselves, to save our NHS, to care for our country and for our world. Good night. Sleep well and know that God loves you. Amen. Oh,